I've been thinking a lot about friendship. Dude, my eyes are like puffy because I got these contacts in. I just got I, I just got these contacts. I was wearing these glasses, but I ended up getting contacts too. And uh, they're like day and night contacts that you can sleep with. And they're new. I put them in like a week ago or four days ago or five days ago or something. I just watched my video on the fifth dimension. I used to be so crazy, man. Not that I'm not crazy now, but I'm a lot less crazy than I was. Like, I was moving so much before, like, forward and back and, like, looking around and all that stuff. It's not that I don't do that now, but it was, like, almost, like, hard to watch. Think whatever you want. I, um, it's like projection. Like, I used to say anything's possible, but I don't think anything's possible. I don't think there are infinite possibilities. I think that there's a limited number of possibilities based on what you know, based on your limited amount of understanding. So, like, there's infinite amounts of possibilities, uh, combinations, based on on your finite understanding. So there's, the infinite becomes finite as a result of that. So like everything you know is infinite to you. It's everything. But it's finite because it's not everything objectively, but it's everything to you subjectively. So there's that difference, differential or difference. And you can make any combination of anything based off of the pool of knowledge that you have, or the information and the knowledge, the way you present the information. So, like, chemicals. I keep thinking of these chemicals, like, putting chemicals together to form new chemicals. It's the same way with interaction. Uh, electrons bind and change chemical structures, and focus guides electrons. So your focus changes chemical structures. If you look at someone, their chemical makeup actually changes. If you know someone, their chemical makeup changes. Knowing, like looking, is different than knowing. People use their eyes to know, but you don't need to. You can know without your eyes. I don't know whether which direction to take it, like to take it scientifically and, and think about, like, possibility, because what I do is, what I really like to do is, is humanize it, you know? Think about friendship and, and personality and inter interaction and, and how to help people interact with each other to get along better in society, because it's a big chemical reaction. We're in a big soup of chemicals. Our bodies are chemicals, H2O, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon fucking phosphorus, whatever. It's probably all in there. You look at these, these ridiculous amounts of chemicals and they're all in our body or a lot of them are in our body and our surroundings and like this chemical soup that we exist in like ceramic and, and what else is in here? Fluoride. I don't know what's in this thing. I was chewing earlier. Protein, well it says there's zero grams of protein, but just the fact that the protein's listed is kind of strange. Well, I have some malatol and sorbitol, glycerol, aspartame, that's gross, dude. Soy, lectin, like what is this, sh this chemical shit? I put this stuff into my system, like it's already in my system when it's here, but then when I put it in my mouth, it becomes more in my system. Well, it depends on what I think of as my system. If I think of my system as my room then it's in my system, but then you kind of like put it into your system and you put it into your body and that becomes a little more your system. Um, so, but anyway, this, this chemical, like what you do with the chemicals is so important because really life isn't choice. It's a reaction to chemicals. It's society as a whole reacts to what resources it comes up with. If it finds oil, that's a chemical, and it changes the society as a whole. If it finds iron, it totally revamps the society. If it has different chemicals in the air, if you're breathing in different chemicals, it changes the society. If you're eating different chemicals. So 
it changes society. If you're, and then the electrons take part because a, a lot of chemical reaction is electron reaction, induction and, and reduction, like adding and taking away electrons. So a lot of it is like your feeling and how you feel and how you project your feeling, where you project your feeling, when you project your feeling, how you do it. Excuse me. A lot of it is how, like when is how. How is, is when. So, so don't think of it as when, but always think of it as how you're doing it because you're always doing it and you're doing it somehow. And so how you're doing it is the most important thing. How you're doing it. Yeah, think it, dude, whatever. Think it, let it, let your thoughts think. Be you. Be yourself. That's what I thought. Be yourself. Be you. You know, you do it. Um, I like water, but not too much. Because hydrogen can overdo you. Water with food is good because the carbon mixes with the four hydrogens to form methane. And then you shit that out or, or fart that out or breathe it out. And that's healthy. And then you have oxygen left over, which also forms with a carbon to produce carbon dioxide, which you breathe out. So water with food is good. Water by itself, you always have carbon in your system, so it kind of flushes you, but you know, don't want to do too much of it. I would, before, I was thinking, like, I would drink a huge amount of water when I was out, and then I would feel socially weird, and I would wonder why, and it was because I drank so much water. Uh, chemicals, like uh, alcohol, I'm not sure what... Uh, what is this methyl alcohol? I guess I can look that up real quick. This is just me telling you about like my personal chemical choices which I don't know why I'm doing. That's all I can really tell you because I don't know what your chemical choices are. There's just so much, so much. Oh, alcohol molecule. Is it that easy? Carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, dude. The carbon's bound to hydrogen atoms. which may bind to other carbon to form a carbon chain, methanol, which is the kind you don't drink. Ethanol, which is drinking alcohol, has two carbon atoms. So that's it, man. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen is all that's in alcohol. It's real organic stuff, but it's just the amounts that you put in. It's, uh, it's, it looks like uh, mostly carbon, eight, a little bit of oxygen, a little bit of hydrogen. So you got your water properties, and, and the, with, it's a heavier water. Um, I wonder what the charge is on this. It's got 109 degree, degrees radius. It's so interesting, like it, it splays. Like it goes alcohol. <laughs> alcohol comes from a, an Arabic word. Al Ghul. You know? We think like the Arab nation. Like the Arab nation, dude. We were Arabs one time. So, and it's not, okay, so it's not just about what you put in your body, but how much of what you put in your body. Very, very important. Carbon, oxygen, hydrogen is like 90% of what we are, 80. Other chemicals, well, we got our
So, okay, uh, okay, it's not so important about the specifics. I mean, it, I could tell you about my specifics if you want to know, but really, I'm, I'm more interested in like realizing that everything we're doing is a response to the chemicals around us. Everything is made up of chemicals. Don't think of chemicals as drugs and things like that. Think of like paper as chemicals, and plastic as chemicals, and air as chemicals, and feelings are a result of chemical change. They say chemicals in the brain, chemicals in entering the brain, leaving the brain, chemicals around the brain, chemicals outside the brain that are magnetically attracted to chemicals inside the brain that are moving towards your head and away from your head. Chemicals, chems, atoms and molecules. I guess chemicals are really molecules. Or I guess it's not really, an atom's not really a chemical. A chemical's more like when two atoms come together and they form a chemical of some sort. Chemical meaning it's, it's, it's uh, chemistic. I'm going to look up the word and see what exactly what it is. So the, the concept of chemicals came from taking a composition um, of something like water or chemical compound. The guy that invented it used copper carbonate. And realizing that when you take a sample from it and then another sample from it, another sample from it, a different sample from it, another sample of it, it's always the same composition when you break it down to the atomic structure and that becomes the chemical composition. That's cool. It's real basic. I mean, obviously, it's like almost like just without realizing it, we know it nowadays because chemicals are so common. But like taking samples out of a composition and seeing the chemical compound structure. Chemicals, dude. It's basically the chemicals are the, the layout of specific things. So, you know, we have our things and then those things have chemicals, co chemical compounds within them. Those compounds have chemicals in them. And then you like paint something black, and then so the thing has the chemical compound, and the paint has the chemical compound, and you got to kind of separate some things from some things depending on the thing you're looking at. Because, like this plate, this is a different chemical compound than this, than this, than this. Only the paint, but then if you strip it away and you look at the ceramic, you'd probably see a chemical. Ceramic is probably a chemical of some sort, carbonized chemical, heated up and changed because it's heated, because that means the electrons slip off and it binds to other things and gets stuck. And you can kind of reinduce it with more heat, like slip off more, and then when it's hot you can slip it in and change it that way, like change it back or change it to another thing. If you're smart about it and if you're diligent and tenacious, you can take things in both directions. Like you can heat it up and change it, and then you can heat it up and rechange it back to what it was before, or heat it up and change it again, but probably won't change again. I mean, you probably could change it if you heat it up to a different temperature. Uh, okay, so all that mumbo jumbo, maybe you got it, maybe you didn't, I did. Um, it's Life is a chemical soup and resources are very important and my whole point with all this is that we need to get our society to a place where we can scientifically, calmly, laboratorially, structurally put together any chemicals into any compound structure at any time anywhere so that we can all have any chemical compound and then, at that point, by the time we can do that, it'll be because we're smart enough to know what compounds do what, or what compounds we need to accomplish what goals, and we've found a balanced, harmonious version of it. And we'll be able to do that eventually. Humans are destined for that, to be able to take what they need and use it to accomplish anything at any time. And it's like, it won't be dangerous because we'll be like creative compounds out in the universe and have space and 
space, you want your space, we have space. Now we navigate it. I'll, 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 I don't even to tell you what I'll do. I'm just going to edit this up. I'm like, it's, it's perfect, it's fine. Friendship, I wonder how friendship peels into this. Friendship is a chemical reaction. Certain people have different chemicals in their body, depending on what they eat. What people eat conducive things, probably. I don't know if that means if people eat the same thing, they're going to be better friends, or if they eat different things that, like if one person eats spinach and the other person eats mustard or mayo, mustard, maybe those would come together, spinach and mustard, I don't know. Or like if one person has... No... Well, look at like alcohol. So when two people drink alcohol, they become better friends. If they drink alcohol at the same time, if they, if they change their chemical structures towards the same kind of chemical structure, they become more conducive to each other. That's very interesting. So if you eat the same foods as people, you'll become better friends with them, or you'll be able to become better friends with them. If you breathe the same air, if you move your body in the same way, yoga classes and things, if you shoot the same gun, lift the same metal, stand at the same altitude. The list goes on, the chemicals. So it's real important that we're all in the same kind of wavelength with chemical compounds and structures. Like if we can, we already, the U.S. is kind of systematic in, in, in structure, like we have a lot of the same things everywhere. And I bet that, that everyone's eating McDonald's actually brings everyone closer together, even though it's not a good chemical, really. Like, it's like kind of poisonous if you do too much of it. Even a little bit becomes a lot. So, but it also binds people in unity, in a sense. But, you know, the kind of unity is very important. And, and so, like, tofu and spinach, I thought, again, I keep thinking of spinach, man. Spinach, dude. Iron. It's like... Oranges. I thought iron, you don't need to pull it out of the ground so much because you can eat it. I mean, you do pull it out of the ground, spinach comes out of the ground. There, huh? Iron, huh? F E. E. F. F. I can taste the iron in spinach, I think. The metal, I have like a. I don't know if that's. if it's just the iron, if it's like an iron compound or what. Wow, man, that's really cool. So what can we do to get on the same level chemically? Well, think the same thoughts because that produces electrochemical responses and the brain alters your body chemistry. And, your, and our bodies are similar. They're like hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen. Lots of ambient chemicals that we put into our body or get them from the outside from our system but so how do we treat the carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen, particularly carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen. Keep the nitrogen involved. Nitrogen's cool. Um, electrochemically, uh, breathing out the electrons, we, we, we oxidize the same way, and we reduce the same way with the methane, putting, you know, in induction and in induction. Twisting and turning is good for us. Eating ap apples and fruit is good for us. Well, I, I can't decide what everyone's going to do, so I can just tell you what I do, and maybe we'll be friends, and or maybe the people that I'm naturally attracted to are the people that do kind of the same stuff as me without realizing. So it's, you don't really have, don't worry you don't have to worry about what you do when you meet people and being fake and stuff because the reason you met them is because you're similar to them in nature. So be honest about your lifestyle and they'll be honest about their lifestyle probably as a result and you'll form a magnetic connection or bonding of some sort of chemical bonding. Uh, magnetic bonding. That's fucking cool. Fuck, dude. That's fucked. That is... No, no need to throw fuck, fuck, fuck. You know that word? Fuck, fuck, fuck. But I mean, that's like... It's like the chemicals have fucked at that point, you know? Wow. Cool video. Too bad it's so long because I want to put it on Ian Crossland channel. Pero, I'll put it on the Crossmag channel instead, I think.